Hello, my beautiful friends and fellow space blobs. As always, it feels so good to be in this space with you, exploring, getting creatively inspired, finding our soulfulness and mysticism in this life, and feeling really empowered to connect with our own unique paths and get to be ourselves with all of this. And we are talking about a topic today that I think is so great for its symbolism, its richness, the amount of time it kind of encapsulates the way the process works. We are going to be talking about the North and South node of the moon. They are shifting signs this month. And with that comes a whole new 18 month cycle. And before we even get into the core of that conversation, I just want to put out there right up front that this conversation is not meant to be predictive or to tell you what the next 18 months need to look like in your life. In fact, I think as we have this conversation and it unfolds, you will find that I'm going to be talking a lot about finding our own rhythm and stepping away from some of the predictive, constricting ways that we sometimes maybe think of our lives and the way that we need to live them. And I think astrology sometimes falls into that camp with some of the predictive ways that the language is used. And today, I want this to be all about creating spaciousness in the way we think about our cycles in life, our timing in life, our own rhythm in life. I want this to feel really rich and really like you can access your own energetic signature as you move through. So with that being said, let us get into the beauty and the poetry and the magic of the nodes of the moon. The nodes of the moon are this rich, poetic, symbolic place to do some exploration because they're not physical planetary bodies. Uh, These are calculated points that really represent the meeting point of the sun and moon on the ecliptic. So they create our eclipses. It's those places where the sun and moon are really in alignment from our perspective here on earth. So every time these nodes change, which is about every 18 months, we have a new series of eclipses in those signs. We have a north and a south node, and they are the complementary signs that work together. So for the last 18 months, the north node has been in Taurus and the south node has been in the opposing sign of Scorpio. This month, these signs are going to change. It will be north node in Aries and south node in Libra. And I love that this takes 18 months every time, that we have this beautiful amount of time to explore our becoming and our self expression. For me, that has so much beauty to it. 18 months is this perfect amount of time because if you take a moment here after this video or while we're sitting here today and think about who you were in January 2022 and who you are sitting here now and everything you have moved through, everything you have learned, all the wisdom you have gained, I think it's kind of awe-inspiring the way that we move through an 18-month cycle and how much can elapse and how much can be embodied and experienced and explored. And that's one of the reasons I love this dynamic. I mean, of course, also if it's connected with eclipses, every eclipse season will then be connected to these signs, right? Wherever the nodes are calculated at the time. It also means there's this flavor of rebirth and renewal that we are exploring and playing with and working with. These nodes really, to me, express an exploration of our shedding of skins, of our changing form, of our the way that it feels to change and move through life. And because of that, I really, really love them. I also you know, tend to kind of shy away from this whole idea of the nodes of destiny. A lot of times you'll hear the nodes talked about in these really kind of black and white terms, these really harsh terms where it's the North node is where you're going and all the positivity and everything you're ever going to do. And the South node is all the things you're leaving behind, all the bad, all the bad patterns. And I think there's a little bit more nuance to it than that. For me, the North node is about where we're getting curious where we're getting curious about who we're becoming, what's coming up next, new skills we're developing, learning how to be in new forms in ways that we've never been before. This is really vulnerable exploration of who we are beyond our old patterning, who we are when we leave behind a familiar shore, which is so exhilarating and also extremely vulnerable. 
And the south node is really about getting curious about ourselves, about our shadows, about if you're into internal family systems, our exiles. It's about getting familiar with and loving and understanding things inside of us that need that love and understanding in order to be released in the first place. And that there is this longing for empowerment in the places where maybe we have been pushing parts of ourselves away. And so it's a really beautiful expression, I think, of both what it feels like to grow and what it means to grow is to be able to also look at our shadows and our pain points and care for them in the growth process. And this dynamic is really played out when we look at the North and the South nodes. So we have been working with an 18 month cycle that is closing out now, which is like I mentioned, the North node in Taurus and the South node in Scorpio. And this has been a really beautiful, very intense 18 months. I know on my part, <laughs> my life has changed drastically. I am just in such a different place than I was January, 2022. I moved to Sweden. I have been going through a lot of my own healing and self-realization in places I did not even know I was about to do that. Um, so it's a really fun thing to do just in this little moment in time to reflect on these last 18 months and what that has brought about for you. Uh, North Node and Taurus had so much to do with trusting life again and coming back into our own natural state, feeling safe in our bodies again, learning how to commune with that, learning how to commune with the information waiting in in the physical and to embrace our natural shape and state more often and leave behind kind of the synthetic world that is always trying to put us into nice little square boxes all of the time. And the South noted Scorpio uh, was also really interesting because it was all about connecting with our shadows, understanding our haunted houses, our fears, the places where we've had the most pain and that transforming that relationship with those places from a place that we can't stand to ever go or look at into a place that can be here with us and help empower us. And that is no small uh, exploration to do. I think that's a lifetime of explorations to do. Um, if you're into Mike Flanagan, I feel like the North Node in Taurus and the South Node in Scorpio is very much like a Mike Flanagan show like Haunting of Hill House. Um, or Midnight Mass. Uh, if, you, if you're into Mike Flanagan, that's what it always makes me think of when I think of the North and South nodes in the signs of Taurus and Scorpio. But I really want to give us a sense of what these upcoming nodes are going to feel like and some of the themes for them. And I'm really excited to discuss this because I think Aries and Libra, which is where we are headed, North node and Aries, South node and Libra, I think that these two signs often get typecast really, really easily, right? Aries and Libra. And there's so many layers to both of these energies, so much richness here to play with and explore for this next 18 month cycle. And I think my goal here today, as we explore some of these themes that I will tell you about and some of these ways of exploring it is maybe you can connect with thinking about how you would like to interact with this next 18 month cycle and to start getting a little visionary and playful and connecting with your inner dreamer. So let's start with the North node in Aries, often considered where we are headed, right? Or where we are going, the, the future opening up before us. Of course, Aries is beginner's mind. It's this beautiful beginning point and Interestingly enough, the way that we move back through the zodiac when we're talking about the nodes, this is kind of the completion of all 12 signs of an 18 year cycle that we've been moving through. And so there's also this sense of completion, of coming home, of rounding something out, of understanding something, of incorporating something. And I think when we initially hear anything that has to do with North Node and Aries, any kind of Aries energy, that we'll often hear a lot that has to do with confidence, getting it done, getting out there, hitting the pavement, making it happen, sealing the deal, pushing forward. All of those kind of phrases come up. Whenever Aries gets into the mix, there's always this hustle culture language just shows up. And I find that to be not very useful. Um, I'm not interested in that. Like for me, when I hear that kind of like pushing forward, making it happen, I just kind of feel detached and disconnected. I don't really want to have anything to do with it. For me, 
yes, it can be beautiful to pursue things and to go for it and to feel that empowerment and that electricity, of course. But I think for me, more than anything, when I think of the North Node in Aries, this is all about reclaiming our own unique energetic style and signature, coming home to ourselves, taking off all the heavy layers, like who we think we need to be for everybody else. You know, the way we look, the way we perform our timing on things, you know, this is about moving at your own pace in your own unique way and finding the courage to connect with that. And it's not going to look like a traditional success story. You know, I think with that story of North Node and Aries being about getting it done and moving forward and pushing things out, it kind of puts us into that mold of, okay, I need to have this be a traditional success story, 18 months. But what does success mean? What does that really look like? I think I ask this question a lot of myself and I bring it up a lot here in this space, but I think it's a really important question because what is success to you? And is it peace? Is it uh, not abandoning yourself, you know, even though maybe you are used to doing everything for everybody else or always saying yes to things? Is it, is it working less? Is it uh, doing more of something that feels really, really nourishing to you? Is it expressing yourself more clearly in the way you dress or the way you represent yourself in the world? There's so many ways that we can be connecting with what it means to be in success and what it means to be in our own unique energetic rhythm. It's really about reclaiming our power to decide that for ourselves and for it not to be decided for us by the larger culture. And I think also this is a time with the North Node in Aries that we'll be thinking about the ways that we can make it so that people feel comfortable and at home living here. We're going to be thinking, I think, on a collective level about the way that we can support more people in being at peace and feeling safe in this world, which is really, really important. So some of the themes that I think will be really powerful during these next 18 months are going to be, like I mentioned, connecting to your own unique energetic signature, what your timing is, who you are in the world, how you want to express, reigniting creative sparks for something that we've loved since we were children. So if there are any kind of creative projects that maybe you loved when you were eight or 12 or 15 that have kind of gone by the wayside, this is a season of really bringing those back to life and remembering that they never left us in the first place, celebrating our own timing in life. So this is really about owning our whole story. And rather than saying I did things late, or I didn't do things on time, or I did things too slowly, this is going to be about really honoring and working on the storytelling around the way we talk about our timing, and the way we talk about our own becoming. This is so important. And I think celebrating our own timelines is so powerful. This is going to be, you know, with Aries energy, there's an initiating sense of energy here, which means that there are new beginnings, there are new things opening up. And I think the crucial part with that, with working with North Node and Aries, is that there's a sense of mystery in initiation. If we're initiating new paths, we don't know what that road is going to look like. And we'll have to accept that anything that we initiate now, we don't know how it's going to end. We don't know what the results are going to be. We're going to feel that we are forging our own path. And that can feel a little scary because we won't be walking in the footsteps of somebody before us, showing us the way. There will be a sense that we are kind of doing this in this vulnerable state. And I think it's important to remember for any initiating that you may be doing with any new beginnings you may be doing that it won't feel like there is a well-established path there. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not getting the assignment wrong. That's just how it feels. Let's get into the South node in Libra, because this is another passion topic for me. Libra is just one of those signs that has been so discredited, I think, and has had so much disservice because it is one of the most powerful energetic signs you can work with. And yet culturally on the pop culture front, it's been all about this kind of pretty, pleasing, diplomatic, easy breezy identity. You know, when we hear about Libra, it's always this kind of vague, oh, relationships. Oh my gosh, that frustrates me so much. You know, Libra is first and foremost about the deep connectivity of life that in experiencing myself, right, which is what Aries is all about. Aries is all about experiencing our individuality, experiencing the experience of just being 
an individual separated from the rest of the world. But in order to experience that, I have to be connected to others. I have to see and be seen. I have to witness and be witnessed. The vulnerability of that seeing, of that exchange of sight, of that exchange of ideas is really where we experience our individuality and where we learn about who we are and what we are. And it's that kind of idea, you know, the world changes through observation. Activities and movement changes through observation. So Libra for me is really the core of that. Through observing each other, through our relationships, we change and the world changes and the dynamics change. And I think that, you know, South Node and Libra, if we're thinking about it, South Node as a place where we're reflecting on old patterns, if we're and old traditions that maybe aren't working for us anymore, a lot of this is going to have to do with performance and the roles that we think we need to put on and the, and the masks we think we need to put on and the, the ways that we think we need to show up in order to be loved or seen. It's going to deal with all the people-pleasing tendencies that our culture really wants us to put on ourselves which I think this is such a beautiful thing. Like what a relief, right? To have that conversation and to have it coming to life in our culture at this time. And I think that, yes, it can be about our individual people pleasing, right? With specific relationships in our lives. But I think this is also about the cultural pleasing, <laughs> pleasing our culture. You know, for me, this whole whole 18 months is going to be, you know, this whole idea of the elevator pitch, or when you go to a Christmas party or a reunion, and you have to have your elevator pitch, like who you are in the world. And it has to make sense, it has to sound good, and it has to sound respectable, and it has to sound mature enough, and it has to all make sense. This is a time to challenge why we feel we have to have that elevator pitch version of ourselves at all times. And that this wants to have a deeper witnessing of our whole process. And that includes within ourselves as well as within our relationships. Also, I would say that the South Node and Libra, if something doesn't feel comfortable, if something doesn't feel right, if something feels off, if something feels tense, this is going to be a time of acknowledging that rather than saying, oh yeah, I'm totally comfortable. This chair is great. Even when you your back hurts and your leg is going to sleep, this is a time to say, no, my back hurts and my leg is going to sleep. I don't like this chair. Um, this is going to be, I think, on a larger scale about asking those questions. Why do we keep doing this thing? Why do we keep having disdain for childlike wonder? And why do, you know, why do we keep letting ourselves be put in these little boxes? There's going to be so many questions around this. So some of the themes that I think will be really powerful to work with and play with and explore, maybe you'll feel this, is one, of course, setting boundaries. And that comes up, you know, that's been a very popular topic for the last five years or so, this whole idea of setting boundaries. But I think it starts with acknowledging what actually doesn't make us comfortable. And maybe that's more of where we should begin. Just being able to acknowledge in ourselves when something feels a little bit like it's pinching and noticing that and really acknowledging it and giving it a voice. Recognizing when we feel we are trying to make other people comfortable or when we are trying to make other people love us by putting on a presentation that we think will keep us safe. This is just going to be about really like being kind to ourselves with this. This isn't about stop people pleasing, set your boundaries, be sassy. This is about the compassion for the parts of ourselves that have felt like terrified to exist in the world. Um, this is also just a season of learning to express our needs and it being okay to have preferences, to have things that you prefer and want in life and just finding voice for that in healthy ways that we can start to really incorporate into our language, into the way we communicate with others. And I think also finally that this is about understanding that our own unique timing and rhythm is going to be its own. It's not going to fit into uh, a group all the time and that that's okay. Of course, the North and South nodes are in a conversation and they feed into each other in that dynamic, in that oppositional dynamic that allows us to explore self 
and other, to explore connection and relationship, to explore the way that we belong and also that we have to belong to ourselves first. If we are to belong in any group or in any relationship, that is going to be kind of the core of this conversation for the next 18 months. And I just want to give you the date. So this starts on July 18th and it will go till this month, 2023, until January 11th, 2025. So for these next 18 months, these are some of the themes that I think are going to be really, really interesting and fun to play with. I'm really looking forward to this aspect of all of this conversation. And if you are interested in learning a lot more about this, I would love to have you over on Patreon. I am hoping over the next few weeks to put together some resources that have to do with this so that you can kind of explore it for yourself. Also, we are doing one of my favorite things ever, which is a six week journey through Venus retrograde, which starts on July 22nd. This is going to be a beautiful series called The Alchemy of Venus Retrograde. It's going to help us to incorporate where we've been, what we've moved through, allow us to open up to new visions, create some mystic space for ourselves, process everything we've been through, move into some new energetic themes, because this is a transit that's all about energetic renewal. So I would really, really love to see you in that space. I'm so excited about it. Every week, I'm going to provide you with a chat, a conversation about alchemy, the process of Venus, what's going on with her journey, and then materials, resources to do rituals, journaling prompts, it's going to be just a really rich and lovely space. So I'd love to see you there. I just love offering up all of this goodness to you there. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, of course, and my websites. I'll leave all those links below. I love you all so much. Every time you leave me a message or a comment or just show up here in any way, it feels so amazing to me. I appreciate it so much. I hope you have a beautiful beginning to the North Node in Aries and the South Node in Libra. Let me know your questions or your thoughts on this topic. What comes up for you when you think about uh, the nodes of the moon? And is this a topic that you would like to have a little bit more of a deeper dive on? Let let me know and I will talk to you all so very, very soon.